Well, it's finally back. Uh, I guess it's going to be kind of a small update here, even though nothing's really changed other than the fact that I brought it back. So, here we go. Um, I guess what this one will be about is I'll just go uh, through what exactly, step by step, I'm going to be doing now, now that I got it back. Uh, I had to think about it, and I think I got it down pretty good. Uh, first thing here, well, um, uh, probably about two weeks before I can start working on it, i got to clean up the garage, rearrange stuff, and yada, yada, yada. Sister's going to have a graduation party, so, and stuff like that in there, so, whatever. Anyways, so, yeah. First thing I'm going to be working on here is, once I get it back in there and working, is steering. Uh, obviously, I remember, I think I told you I got a different steering box. That thing's going to go. It's not even going to be there anymore. Might be. I don't know. Who knows? Um, I got uh, from an old Riviera that I scrapped out a couple weeks ago. I got the steering column from it. So I will be using that. Uh, I just quick threw it up there once just to hold it once and it looks like it might work just fine. I don't know. It should uh, fit in there just fine. Uh, the only thing is, um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, another thing I'll do is when I work on the steering is I'll test fit the headers so uh, see if it's, make sure the steering clears the headers. Uh, I had the one set of headers but I also found a, I also got a, um, uh, a set of Corvette headers and side pipes. For it. The side pipes I won't put on the sides, but I'll stand them up and use them as stacks. I'll show the show them to you in just a minute. Um. So yeah, that'll be that. The trickiest thing is uh, was the steering the arms. Might have to put them on backwards, but I don't know. I'll have to look at it yet. I have to because I can't quite remember, but I'll try to make it work. Um. That's the only difficult thing I might have about the steering is the steering arms. Find out later I guess um, uh, let's see what else and then after I get steering done um, I will be working on the rear suspension and the rear bed at the same time probably really some because uh, so that's yeah uh, as, you, as you know I'll be using that freezer for the rear bed um, it fits right on the frame rail here. It fit right on the frame rail, so I'll just have to cut out the bottom of the some of the fridge to the shape of the frame here. Like the fridge will be sitting, the front half here will be sitting, actually the bottom of it technically, um, will be sitting right on the frame rail. And then I'll just cut out, you know, to the shape of this, and then you know, cut it back down to here, so then it'll be back to you know, regular anyways. So. I guess it's not kind of making sense. It's kind of hard to describe it. You know, you'll you'll see what I mean once I do it. Obviously, so yeah, I got mount the shock absorbers and the anti sway bar. Um, what I was, I think I explained to you probably once or twice before, is that I was thinking maybe having to weld something here, a mount here, and a mount on the frame. So for the tricky part is welding one to cast iron. That'll be weird, or it's hard, I guess. And then just you know whatever. But uh. What I'll be doing also is I have to create probably out of one by one square tubing framework to hold the the free the freezer box body onto the frame, mount it to the frame, give it some rigidity. And anyway, since it comes out to about I don't know, probably about I think what was it about two feet or so past it, I might just uh, make a mount from here. You know, utilize this mount here, this old factory mount. Let's say it comes out, you know, the bar comes out to here and it, you know, mounts to the square tubing. And it'd probably look goofy, but it should work just fine. So, that's, uh, I'm going to wait on that. So, I mean, I'll find out once I'm building out, see if it'll work. If it will, great. If it won't, well, then I'll have to do it the other way like I just stated. So, that'll be that. Um, so, what else? Uh, then that'll be that. And then... After that, the rear suspension box, um, it would, well, pretty much be step by step as far as basically get it going. Then you know I won't worry about the body and the floors and anything like that. That'd be the last thing you worry about. If you're doing something like this, it's that's the last thing you're gonna worry about. You gotta get the chassis, suspension, and everything else done first. So then it'll be you know mount the radiator, um. Uh, start plumbing some stuff, I guess. You know, because after that, then I could, you know, design a mount for the 
find a gas tank, design a mount for it, get it mounted, um, get the cab permanently mounted. That'll probably be the next step. Uh, um, yeah, once steering column's in there, then you know maybe work on gauges or something. I don't know. Probably won't worry about that quite yet. But uh, then uh, brakes. Oh, that's, that'd be the, that'd be another thing too. Right away afterwards would be probably the next thing after I get down at the back end would be the brakes. Uh, I think all I had to do is I have to do is still cut out them. Uh, finish cutting out them uh, brackets to hold the brake calipers on, and then I should be good to go. As far as that, it should mount straight on there then. So, yeah, um, yeah, I think one other thing change I'm going to make is the front tires here, I'll leave the rear ones the same, you know, but, uh, I think I want a taller tire, or taller rim, well, taller rim and tire, so I think I'll probably, like, look for 17 inch rims, like skinny old ones, not, you know, like, bling bling 17 inch rims, no, something, you know, four or five inch, you know, five inch wide rim, you know, but be like a 17 inch tall, something from the 30s, you know, look for. Then in here, I'll just leave these the same, but I'll just have a taller profile, like slicks, you know, like the Coker tires got them slick tires, maybe something like that, but you know, so, I mean, I haven't, you know, I've decided yet, you know, it's going to be a while yet, a couple months, maybe more, you know, I hope to have this done by fall, or sometime, you know, I hope to have it done by fall, I'll work on it hard as I can, you know, every day, every weekend kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I guess I will show you the Corvette exhaust I got. Well, here's one of the uh, Corvette exhausts. The only thing is, though, it, this would actually work good as, a, what are they called, uh, zombie pipes, I believe, um, where they uh, stick out sideways. Or, stick out sideways. Or they just come straight out at an angle by the door. You should, if you know what I mean, you'll know what I mean. Yeah, if you, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but, uh, anyways, well, these won't fit on here like so. Like, this would be the passenger side one. Because the frame rails right where these pipes would come out. Where they come out that way. So, but then I turn them upside down, because, you know, Chevy headers, you can turn them upside down. So you put it on the other side. And actually, uh, they stick out just perfect. I mean, I don't know how they look. Because I, I couldn't, you know, I'd have to bolt them up and stand back and look at them. I couldn't do that. You know, I'd have to have somebody else hold them for me and look at it. But, uh, uh, it looks like it actually might work if, let's say, I couldn't use the other headers or if these would just work anyways. Then all you do is, uh, cut out a hole at the bottom here and, uh, route the exhaust underneath the, uh, cab and have it come out for the stacks, which I'll show you in just a sec. And then you'd have, what you'd have is a valve here, a dump valve, so you could have open headers when you want to. There's the Corvette exhaust side pipes, and then there's the other one. They're kind of rusty, but they're not rusted through, so. <clears throat> um, uh, that one's kind of, but yeah, so it kind of, except for you'd have to turn this, uh, the tip around and have it face the other direction. Like, I, on the Corvette, I don't know if these are real Corvette ones or not. This is a false tip, and that's the real tip. Well, I'd use that except for the one, the bracket, the weld came off. And two, that one's got a hole in it. Not that, you know, rat rod, who cares. But, uh, you know, I think I'll just use these regardless, because it's the same thing, just the skinny tip. And it actually look kind of cool. Um, I mean, cool either way, but I'll just use these instead since the brackets are not broken off and there's no holes in them. Might as well, right? Just flip the muffler upside down. So, yeah, and then I just have to turn around because you want the shield to stick out. So I just turn this 180. So, it looked cool. I was holding up there yesterday, and it looked really cool. And it'll it'll be really nice when I get it all done. That's for sure. It'll it'll definitely be one of the sickest looking rat rods around. You know, and it'll be functional too. So, anyways, uh. I guess that's probably it for now. Um, uh, so sorry to keep you guys waiting for so long. It's just the way school worked out and the stupid weather in Laramie and yeah. So all right, talk to you guys later.